Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where we're solving the mystery of the floating flag. Well, not really, we're just going to watch what happens. Now, what was going on was I was messing around with the uh, Minmus refueling base with Keith's Froggy Waiter and the three other ships. I'm not going to go through all the names. Um, ready for accepting another vessel, which is what this, this today's mission is all about, is about the other vessel. But whilst uh, scrolling through all the active vessels with the old square brackets, uh, I ended up up here with the flag now you may have noticed earlier on that it says that i can't swap uh, vehicles when moving over the surface which means this flag is in motion and if you actually watch um, my altitude at the top there you'll notice that i'm actually in quite a bit of motion we're currently dropping at something like 25 meters per second and of course that number is growing all the time what with gravity being an accelerative force and all so uh, yeah the ground's coming up uh, pretty fast and i'm wondering what's going to happen and it's just going to blow up. Like I said, I have no idea how that got up there, and uh, I'd really like to know. Obviously some sort of corrupted world file or something. But yeah, anyway, we're talking about this new thing. Um, uh, currently unnamed, uh, this is the vessel that is going to bring everyone and all the science back home when we have done completing Minmus. Now what I'm trying to do here is just kind of uh, stack an extra um, uh, a cockpit on the side. But that, it turns out that didn't work because the, the cockpit can only be in line. So I had to use the, 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 the three-way splitter there and then throw another cockpit, uh, another command pod on the bottom. Uh, which I think this is quite a, a nice looking vessel. Uh, it, it Obviously, this just covered the basics of what I needed for, for the vessel. I had to bring everyone home. Uh, which we, uh, I've actually done one extra cockpit than, than was needed for that. Um, and we also need to bring back all the science, which again is covered with uh, the, the cockpits. I used to think that it was uh, you could only have one of each science, like so, say one of the uh, materials bay or one of the uh, goo canisters per cockpit, and that's why I put quite so many on there. Recently, I found out that that's not true. As long as it's not exactly the same piece of science, you're all right. So as long as you can have multiple materials bays as long as they're in different environments or situations. But, you know, I didn't know that at the time, so I built this absolute monstrosity here. Now, my main concern with this is getting it back safely, obviously. Um, like getting it out there is, 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 is it's just going to happen. You know, there's, there's no way I'm not going to get it out there. I've, I've got so many things out to Minmus now that... <laughs> I, I'm offended that you would even ask that question. But of course, the real question should be, can I get it back to Kerbin without slamming all the science into the floor at like ridiculous rates of meters per second? After putting on all the propulsion and uh, making sure that there was enough room for science and stuff, you would have thought that my first thought would indeed be for parachutes. Um, and, you know, it should have been, it really should have been. But it turns out that uh, my main first thought at this point in time is, oh, let's make sure there's enough lights on the floor. Because, uh, you know, lights are what it's all about at this point. Um, yeah. Well, I'd say that, I have put quite a, quite a heavy, heavy weight on uh, being able to have enough lights for you guys to be able to see recently. And if I'm going to have those lights on there, I might as well make them pretty colours as well. Uh, I particularly enjoy the purple that I put there. But anyway, enough about the, uh, <laughs> the, the lights. Uh, what I'm doing now is putting enough parachutes on to safely break my descent. And hopefully in the right places so that everything is safe. Not just, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced it where you've too, put too many parachutes up high. And then at, when it all starts snaps open your your um, rocket just kind of fractures into a thousand pieces with the top half being on a parachute and everything else crashing into the floor now given that the bottom things on this vessel are in fact uh, command pods that those things at the bottom smashing into the floor would be my kerbals and that's not what we want I've grown quite attached to these kerbals over the course of this series you know they've been off they've done ridiculous things we we've conquered an entire well, I'm going to call it an asteroid. I know it's a moon, but asteroid out there. Uh, anyway, it's the naming ceremony. We're going to call it the cease and desist because I decided at this point that I spent far, far, far too much time on Minmus. Um, and if I can do this right, this vessel will be the last vessel, um, which which should be pretty cool. We're, we'd have uh, got all the science on Minmus, visited all the anomalies, uh, and done all the, the, the crazy stuff. To, so at least I can convince myself that I have completed Minmus. Right, so right here is, my, like I say, my main concern is that we bring this down safely. So I'm going to do a little bit of testing before we actually send this off to Minmus. And we're just going to throw a whole load of solid rocket boosters underneath, throw it up in the air, and um, see if it comes down safely. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we need to watch 
the entire arc for this. I think we'll just uh, watch the launch. I don't know why I put the um, the, the throttle up there. Uh, there seemed to have been no practical purpose to it whatsoever. Anyway, it made it up and it came back down and all the parachutes snapped open and Bill did a wonderful job testing this for us. Um, yeah, no, no, nothing really more to be said there. We just need to watch the actual safe touchdown. Boom! And it balances. Great. As long as we're not on too, too high a slope, I suppose. So all that is really left to be done... Oh, am I actually going to rock it over? Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, so all that's really left to be done now is to go along and put us a launch stage underneath this. Um, I, I, I think we can gather what's going to be in the launch stage. There's going to be solids, so there's going to be a, a, a liquid core. Uh, in fact, it's going to look exactly like this thing right here um it as i said it was a pretty standard construction we've gone from the uh the three-way split um at the top with the cockpits there we've stuck a a stack of solid uh, of liquid fuels underneath that then outside from that we've put uh, uh some liquids secondary stages with fuel lines leading into the central one and then solid boosters on the outside um it's all a fairly standard approach uh, as things go we, we we go quite hard quite fast um we, we we try and punch it through the atmosphere quite quickly uh, i know these have got like essentially two meter diameter uh, cross section but I, I think we can live with uh, the power output that, we, that we're getting there, um, punching through the atmosphere, as I say. So we have a small transfer burn to making Kerbin. Uh, then we have a small corrective burn on the way, which incidentally I absolutely nailed that maneuver node for. Uh, look at that, green tick and everything. And then we are in capture around Minmus, and here is me slowing myself down. I'm, I'm more than a little bit chuffed about how close my periaps came on that. Um, out from Kerbin, I'd managed to get my periaps down to, uh, it was less than 100, uh, 100 kilometers, I believe. Right, so right now I'm sorting out my maneuver nude to put me uh, in, orbit, in orbit just above my, uh, my base. Uh, unfortunately this means that I'm not landing this orbit. Indeed I'm probably not going to land for the next two orbits either. Um, basically just because it's all dark down there and I'm fed up of la landing in the darkness. Um, I, I really want to be able to, to land in daytime because um, I like it there. I like it in the daytime. I like being able to see where I'm landing and uh, whether I'm going to smash into my, my vessels that are already at the base. Indeed, how far away my base is. These are all pieces of information I like to have access to and they all need sunlight, really. Um, so what we're going to do is just... Uh, well, what I am doing right now is I'm just pushing my orbit around a little bit. Um, I, I, I'm doing this pretty much by eye. I wanted the maneuver node to tell me where I needed to be, but for like timing purposes. But now I'm going to do it all just off my nav ball because maneuver nodes. I don't know. I never never seem to get it exactly right. So I'm happy with my where my periaps is. I think that that is where my base is going to be when it turns round into uh, into the daylight. Um, and now we just got to kind of flow round. Uh, having this horrible effect where we can't actually um, time warp when we're really close to the ground. Uh, you know, which is good, but at the same time, I just want to whip around Minmus quite quickly, like, as quick as I can. Though, wow, those, those are some shots right there. It's looking good. Um, I should really remember what that all looks like for my next mission because <laughs> next mission things go wrong. But you know, we'll talk about that next time. Right now I'm coming in to land on top of that, that mountain that the sun is now shining out from, uh, which may or may not be an issue. Um, a, a, a few last second uh, inclination corrections just to make sure that, that we're, we're getting close enough. Uh, and then we've just got to prepare ourselves for the landing. Uh, standard fare, really. We just uh, point around and look at look at our retrograde marker, so we make sure that our engines are going to be slowing us down. And when we feel like we're close enough, just start caning that forward velocity so we can get down nice and low to the ground before we make our, our final actual landing burn. Uh, I'm actually up quite high at the moment. Um, my service altitude is 3.2 kilometers. Not great. Uh, could be better. Of course, this time round, we don't have the added bonus of our kind of like floating map marker that tells us how far away we are when we're like coming over the horizon because obviously we watched it crash at the beginning of the episode. If you don't remember that, 
go back and watch the beginning of the episode again. It was glorious, watching things fall, the explosions, Jeb going, ooh. Uh, but yeah, all right, so we're at the descent stage now, and... Uh, Oh, uh, descent stage. So we've got something like two kilometers to try and drop, or at least that's what um, uh, the, the the map marker tells me. And indeed, top right on my on my um, HUD outlay there tells me how, how high up I am as well, which is all good, really. Um, I didn't realize that it was up there. Uh, I used to think that in the cockpit was the only place we could get that piece of information which is not ideal. Um, I should also point out that at this point in time, I am suffering mad lag, bruv. I mean, look, look at, look at my, my timing thing on, the, on the, the top left there, like my mission time. Uh, you notice even when I'm not looking at the landing site, we're, we're in yellows, and now that when I do look, it's just like boom, solid yellow. Also, my machine was making um, quite a racket at me at this point. Like, my machine's not the quietest thing in the world, bless it. Um, but uh, this just made it like... Uh, 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 uh. Not sure what that was all about. I presume it was just struggling with the, the, the sheer number of bits on my... on screen at that present moment in time so what we need to do now is move, move ourselves a little bit closer i'm kind of weighing up in my head at this point present moment in time it's like do i move closer do i just put it down and try and move some things away uh so i i, I eventually settle on just letting myself drift down to the floor because if uh, i can't hurry it up at all you know that, that's as low down uh, that's as fast as we really want to be falling towards the floor uh, and indeed there's my shadow to say that we are as close as we need to be uh, and once we we gently put down first thing we're going to do is get a quick save and then jump over to the other base over there and um try and move the biome bouncer as it is the broken one um I, I, I don't like to call it broken, it's not actually broken, as it is the one that is not fit for purpose. Um, now for some reason I'm going to retract my keythane drill here. Uh, I thought that maybe the particle effects were, were giving it a bit of grief. Uh, no, is the short answer. So I went away and did some off camera stuff to try and reduce the lag, see if there was anything running in the background or anything like that, and there wasn't. So I was like, alright. Jeb, you're going to have to take this biome bouncer and, and just get out of range. Um, like two and a half kilometers, so that's all we need to do. Uh, it's a nice, simple um, RCS powered, just thrust over the hill. Uh, I, I, I don't think we need to see this. This is just me looking back and making sure that I am indeed two point something kilometers away. Now that we're at said distance, we're going to je jump Jeb out and uh, grab this fuel line, uh, well this fuel uh, hose port bit because we need to go back and attach this to uh, Keith's Froggy Waster, Waiter, I believe. Though I'm starting to think Keith's Froggy Waster may have been a, a better name for the base, but there we go, that's where we're at and this is what we're going to deal with. So Jeb needs to fly all the way back now and uh, we're not going to do that, we're just going to jump to the end. Well, not to the end, we're going to uh, in fact jump to the cease and desist so we can place this uh, fuel line on that because that is the one thing that I had overlooked. I say the one thing, I overlooked quite a lot of things, but that is one of the major things that I overlooked whilst putting this ship together so we need to uh, yeah fix it basically so that, that's quite easy we just uh, use the attachment system to pop that on there and then we're gonna go uh, dump Jeb inside one of these cockpits because it's time we got this vessel back over there uh, you'll notice now I am looking towards the base and uh, we're only just tipping uh, onto the, the the yellow scale a little bit so that's good I, I, I consider that a, um, a mission well performed we, we, we had performance issues and all we had to do was jump over there and fix them right so now what we're going to do is try and fly over in the most graceful of manners possible um now i always manage to do this quite slowly um and and that's not how i should do it i should i should be more firm more affirmative with the with these rocket maneuvers um i would be i'd be much more uh, fuel efficient and probably get myself closer to the mark if I was just like hey I can do this boom but instead I'm being timid and skirting around uh, the issue of landing issue of how far I'm going yeah well, I'm skirting around it anyway and, and I shouldn't I should just get straight at it of course some might say that my commentary right there is an example of skirting about and not saying exactly what's meant to be said at the time but uh, to you right so we're coming in close and we're, we're less than like 80 80 meters away now i know that i need to be within something like 30 meters to be able to get a good um good fuel line connection which means this sort of distance 50 meters is not good enough 
but I am more than a little bit worried about how much fuel I don't have. Um, if, if I end up careening over there um, at a rate of knots and then have no fuel for stopping myself, well, I can see this leading to all sorts of uh, misadventures, really. Um, <laughs> it would actually be a little bit upsetting if I was to smash into the spirit of resilience. Um, yeah. All right, so it's time to get Jeb out again because we, despite all my worries, managed to get this exactly where we wanted it to be. And now we're going to link our cables up with this this little vessel over here, uh, in the hopes that maybe, just maybe, um, oh no, we cannot cannot get that. Uh, so we're going to have to rearrange some things, but that's fine. But maybe just maybe re refuel our vessel so we can head back home when all the science is done. And uh, what science, you ask? Well, we're going to do that next time, because right now I'm just disabling everything in this base so that we can have a, a fairly decent frame rate. Uh, and I will say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure. I will see you next time where, as I say, we're going science hunting. Bye!